guys, Lemmy here. Welcome back to another art video. Today we're going to be reviewing the Pentel Pocket Brush Pen. And I actually purchased this online from Amazon. And the reason why I purchased it was that there were so many artists on YouTube using this pen that I thought maybe, I mean, maybe it's just like really good. Like maybe this is just the most amazing pocket brush pen ever. But, uh, one thing that immediately made me purchase it was that it came with two refills, and I like that. So, um, I don't really know much about it. I've been using brush pens a lot lately for Inktober, so I feel like I have some experience with them. I've tried two different kinds of brush pens, actually three at this point. So, uh, I feel like maybe I, I would know if this is good or something I enjoy by this point. So I kind of want to try it out and see what I think of it. And I'm just going to read what it says here. It's the pocket brush pen. It's black ink. It's permanent pigment ink. Spirit of wonder, Pentel. That's a weird slogan, but I guess that's their slogan. <laughs> uh, let's see. It says permanent ink is both water and fade resistant, leak proof fittings, and measured ink flow guard. Directions. Remove cap and unscrew barrel. Firmly press the narrow end of the cartridge into tip unit. Mm. Replace barrel and tighten securely. Hold pen vertically with tip down until ink drains down to bristles. And then make test strokes to get ink flowing. No, no, this sounds like a lot of responsibility, you guys. Note, avoid contact with the bristles when removing or replacing the cap, because you don't want to damage the tip, I guess. Um, permanent ink will not wash out of clothing. That's good to know. Ink flow is controlled, but may be affected by extreme temperature or air pressure changes. I guess you wouldn't want to take this on an airplane. Um, if bristles clog with ink, of dry ink, unscrew the tip unit, Remove the cartridge and rinse the tip unit till the or rinse the tip unit and bristles with warm water. So I feel like I'm going to just need to cut this off and keep it because it's full of important information if this thing stops working. Each Pentel product is warrantied for life against failure due to defects in materials or workmanship. For warranty service, return product for free repair or replacement to Pentel of America. Hey, that's, that's pretty cool. It's made in Japan. All right, so um, I'm just going to kind of take this apart and we're going to do a little test, a little testing, and then see what the heck we're going to do. So I put together this sheet so I could talk about a few points. Now, the first thing that I did when I finally put the pen together was that I tested it. And here I wrote down slowly, normally, and quickly. And that is how fast or slow I make a line. So the slower I go, the more wobbly my hand is. So you'll see where it shakes naturally if I go slowly. If I go normally, which is pretty quick, you'll get a nice smooth line. And if I do it really quickly, you'll get a break or feathering in the line, which adds texture to the line. I also try different brush shapes. So shapes that the brush naturally makes when you lay it down in certain ways. And you can see that I've made sort of like petal shapes by pressing down the shape of the pen to the paper. Um, also, if you do stippling, you'll get like mini petal shapes. So that's pretty cool. Then you'll see the perpendicular line on the right. That is, if I follow the line that the pen naturally makes, I can make a thin line. But then if I go perpendicular to that line, I can make a thicker line. And I can do this by not adding any additional pressure to the page. It's just that more of the nib is touching the paper, which makes a thicker line. Also, on the right, you'll see different thicknesses that I've made, how thin I can make it and how thick I can make it. The thickest I can make the line by using the side of the brush is half of a centimeter, which is pretty large for what I do. I wouldn't have any pictures that cover that much area unless I wanted to cover maybe like a whole 
bunch of something, like a background of some black. I don't normally use that much black, but it would be handy if I'm trying to cover large areas, but I don't normally do that, and I work pretty small and smaller sheets of paper. So I wouldn't need those lines, but it's nice to have those line widths available to you. Also, you can make really tiny lines. I would say that that line is like a 0.3 or 0.1 in a Sakura Micron or a Prismacolor pen or a Copic. So it's pretty nice, pretty stable. Um, yet you can, I, stable as in you have the ability to consistently make these lines depending on the pressure that you apply to the paper and also um, what side of the nib you're using. Another thing that I showed on that sheet, which is probably passed by now, is the tapering lines where I can make thin lines to thicker lines and back to thin lines again. So that's all in one line and it's a nice clean line. And that's how you normally do line art is that um, if you were using pens of different sizes, you would go back in with different pens and make some lines thicker and some lines thinner, but you also want to taper it out so it's not this big fat line to this tiny line. You want to kind of like smooth it out so it looks like one little gradual line instead of like you used two pens. You want to make it look like you used one pen and you made one line. So after all those tests, I really love this. I, I had a lot of fun with it, but there are a few things that I noticed immediately when I opened the package. And that is this pen does not come with two refills. It really only comes with one refill. And that is because the pen itself doesn't have ink in it. So you have to take one of those quote refills and put it into the pen to actually start the pen off. So you're getting the pen with the ink and then one refill. So that confused me. I wish they packaged it better in a way that made sense to me that it didn't already have ink in it because that's whole one marker worth of ink you're not getting when you thought that you were getting it. So I didn't like that. Felt a little tricked. That or I'm really dumb. I don't know. I just look at the instructions and be like, hmm, I don't know about this. So that's the refill problem. Another refill problem is that I really like this pen so I want to use it more and I looked up how much cartridges uh, cartridges are and they're really expensive and because this pen uses a lot of ink because you can go from thin lines to thick lines really quickly and you might not realize it but you are using a lot more ink you're gonna need to get these refills and I don't like the pricing on the refills so naturally being the wonderful person I am, I tried to look up ways to cheat the system. And I went on calligraphy forums and there was a lot of posts about how to refill the Pentel pocket brush pen. Now, this is not what the company wants. The company wants you to buy the cartridges, but I'm trying to be a rebel here. So I don't necessarily think this is a good idea to do right off the bat. I will say I got another one of these for Christmas, which I wasn't expecting, so I have two of them. But I will try to manually refill them and see if that's a possibility, because a lot of people seem to have success manually refilling these brushes, um, brush pens, and they work just like they would if you bought the cartridges for more money. So if that is successful, I will be doing an update video on how to do that. but. Uh, yeah, if I didn't have two pens, I probably would go with the cartridges just because I'm like, oh, I don't want to ruin it. But if I ruin one, I still have the other, so I figure it's okay. So that's a drawback, the price of the cartridge, which might be able to be remedied, we'll see. Um, another thing that I noticed, having two pens, is that the tips were different. And one of them had a bristle that was just sticking out and I, every line I would make there would be another rogue line from that one bristle that just wouldn't go with the rest of the pen. So I actually ended up cutting it off with a scissor and I only cut that one bristle and then after I cut that piece off I didn't have any other problems. So if you notice you have one bristle that's like crazy long compared to the rest of them, if you just trim that one bristle down it shouldn't interfere with the shape or the point of the brush pen. 
Another thing is that certain brush pens are made with certain nibs. So the Sakura Professional brush pen set that I reviewed prior to this review has three different brush pens with three different kinds of nibs. And if you go with the Pigma Mic brush pen thing or whatever which is like the brown one that has a totally nib different nib than the professional brush pen set so all brush pens have different kinds of nibs and this nib in the Pentel pocket brush pen is actually like a brush so like I said earlier it has bristles so when you put your cap on you want to make sure that you do it right or else you'll mess up the top so don't go too crazy with your your capping and uncapping situation or else you might have a mess and a messed up nib so that's something to keep an eye out for another thing about this pen is that it uses a lot of ink it's very juicy and while that's really nice because i can get some really clean nice um, lines and um, I really like that. And I haven't had a problem with it globbing up either because that's what I was worried about was that since it gives out a lot of ink, maybe it would kind of glob up. But I didn't have that problem though. I did see someone else on the internet had that problem, but I personally have not had that problem. Um, and I like that there's different things you can do with it, like with the shapes and the um, textures you can get by having it feather out if you want to by making a really quick line. I think that's really cool because you can create all these different kinds of textures with the same pen that you wouldn't be able to get with any of the other pens that you might try. So I think that having it be juicier, better than drier is a better option. I, I do like that. I am a fan of it. Another question I ask myself when I do these reviews would be, is it beginner friendly? And I haven't started using brush pens until last year. And I really love the Sakura Professional brush pen set. I had a lot of fun with them and they were very, very friendly to beginners with brush pens. And I've had bad experiences with brush pens before that where Actually, it's the same brand, it's Sakura, but it was the one that came with the Micron that was beige or whatever, and I always hated those brush pens, and I just figured brush pens aren't for me. But that's really not the case. I just didn't like that brand and specific brush pen that they made, because Sakura also made the professional brush pen set, which I love. So if you're a beginner, and you want to see if maybe brush pens are something you might be interested in, then I suggest buying that set because you get three different brushes, one small, one's medium, one's large, and you can see like different things you can do with them and kind of get a grasp on using a brush pen in general. And if you're already knowing that you like brush pens or you enjoy them, then, and you know how to use them, you know how they work, and you've tried them then this is a great pen just to have like it's a pocket brush pen so I'm gonna be taking it around everywhere with my sketchbook I really like it and I think it's really a great product so I will be making another video if I can successfully figure out how to refill it um, and I'm going to do it from experience so I'm going to try one of the pens um, with the the other way of refilling it and if it personally works for me then I will do a video doing it because I don't want to do a video like that that is not the way you're supposed to do something um, unless I know that for a fact it worked for me then I'll do a video on it but um, yeah cartridges are the the option for refilling but I also like that they do have an option for refilling because a lot of pens don't have the option to refill and you just gotta throw them out I really don't like that I'd rather buy refills it's also cheaper in the long run but uh, yeah so I hope that you guys like this review if you have any questions please leave them below and I'll try my best to get back to you um, if there's something that you would like to know that you that I didn't go over, you know, the comment section is available to you. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys found it helpful and we'll do another review some other time soon. Yeah. Take care. Bye guys.